we're going to play a little game called Tail or Bail. Basically, I'm throwing out a few betting trends, and Doug's going to tell us if they're actionable. So, first up, Baltimore. 12 of their last 14 home games have gone under. The total's at 38.5 against the Browns this week. Man, it's tempting to take the under, especially because Cleveland, how they approach things. But Deshaun Watson is back. He looked pretty good. So the question is, is this home thing with the Ravens, to your point, actionable? What's the What are the dots we can connect? Is that home component with the crowd, the atmosphere, the other team, are they struggling to score? Some of this going back to the end of last year is misleading because Lamar Jackson was not healthy and playing, and then the weather was different. And some of these, remember there was like an Arctic weekend for a lot of games at the end of last season. I believe Baltimore at home was one of them. I know they had some rock fights with Cincinnati in week 18 or something like that. Anyways, so this year they've exploded on offense against the Seahawks and against the Lions, and then those two teams did nothing. They were bad spots for those teams. In terms of this matchup, I think we can connect some dots on that, but you really have to... I don't know if this trend applies. I like the under in this game because I think the Browns can dominate the line of scrimmage like they did San Francisco. So I think Baltimore is not going to be as one-sided in this game like they were against the Lions and Seahawks that I mentioned. So I actually like the under in this game, but for other reasons. That trend is interesting. If it was the other way, I would give me pause on the under. So I think it it helps me soothe the... You know, Greases the greases the lane, if you will. But um yeah, I, I don't know if it's really applicable in this case, but I think it's an interesting trend and it's something I'm gonna file away for sure. Okay. Next up, sticking with the unders, Green Bay and Pittsburgh combined to go under in eleven of their last twelve games. The total's at thirty nine. How can you not take an under in a Pittsburgh game? They've been outgained yeah. in every single game. It's insane of all their wins. It's, it's remarkable, but that's the kind of game that Mike Tomlin wants to play. He wants to hang around, hang around, and then win in the fourth quarter. That win against the Ravens was ridiculous. He had, they had no business covering four, let alone winning outright. Aside from that, they have limited quarterback play. Both teams, I don't believe in Jordan Love at all. And then last week's game, it was just like Rippon was so bad for the Rams. They just said, punt, let them you know, have the ball. This will be a really interesting game, but Sharp money has come in on the over of this, which is just mm. baffling. I don't understand it, but I think so much of the sharp money is they rely on their metrics and their analytics from last year, and it's a different game sometimes, and it changes overnight. And the Steelers have been interesting because their their numbers from last year and previous year with T.J. Watt, they're such a different team when he's in the game versus when he's not, and he applies such pressure by himself. He's a one-man wrecking crew, so... I kind of got to be, got to have sort of a gut check on some of these stats. So I like the under for these teams. And like the last 12 versus the first meeting, weather's changing for sure. It lends itself to the under. So I, I, I'm on the under in that game for sure. Okay. Two unders. Last but not least, Dallas is 11 and one against the spread after a loss. Since the start of 2021, they are 16 point favorites against the Giants this week. That seems like a big number, but look what just happened with the Raiders. Right. And I always say this when you see these big. So what if the, Dallas goes up seven nothing. The live line is going to be like 19 and a half. Right. So as soon as you're like between 16 and 17 yeah. all week, and then just like that, bang, it's already 19 and a half. So I, I do like this trend, even though I don't like McCarthy. I think Dallas, especially a big marquee franchise, like I think some of their outright losses either come against really good teams and they get a wake up call or something, or that's like they're fat and happy and they get a wake up call. So like last year, they lost a tough game and then went and blew out, I think, the Vikings. And then, so this year they lost to Arizona outright. And that was like, how did that? So no one saw that one coming. And then they bounced back. So this was a good opponent that they faced in Philly. I think you see a sharp effort. I mean, when the bar is set high, like it is, is in Dallas since the beginning of last year, they have aspirations to win a Super Bowl, at least definitely to go to the playoffs and maybe and try to win a Super Bowl. So coming off a loss, things went wrong. They had, they had chances to win. I think you're seeing a good effort here against the Giants. I, I think this is going to be a dominate, like a blowout win. I think it's going to be a four touchdown win, one of those things, you know, 35, 38, 10. If the Giants score 10, like Tyrod Taylor, I would not lay 16 points against, but he's obviously not playing to veto it. So um, I think that's a, a trend that makes sense. You, I connect that those dots. I think it's applicable. So it helps me if I'm down between, you know, a pick em league. I would definitely side with Dallas. I think that trend does help me sort of figure out how to approach such a ridiculously high spread. Okay, well, there you have it. Three trends right there, and you can decide whether to tail or bail.